Hi, welcome along everyone today. So you've turned the central heating on and guess what? It's not working is it? <laughs> it's not getting hot. No heat. Could be the other way around. You may have heating and find you've got no hot water. So this particular problem concerns everyone that's got an F and E system that is a hot water cylinder and a small little storage tank in the loft and the radiators all kind of work with that so if you've got a combi boiler uh, this video doesn't really uh, need to be looked at by you chaps it's a different thing for you although you do have these valves they're inside your boiler and you can't really do it out without calling an engineer but for those of you with the old f &E system this is the usual cause and culprit and this is the usual thing uh, this is a three-way valve You'll find this usually very close to your hot water cylinder, normal position for it. Now you may have two single ones of these where it's just one port here and one there, and there'll be two of them. They're called two port valves. This one is a three way, the most common one I think. Now uh, when they go, you'll find you either get no hot water or no heating. One or the other, it's usually no heating. <laughs> <laughs> but do please make sure you've done all the usual checks before you go here looking at this valve i.e. turn your room thermostat up make sure you've got power and make sure the pump is running so make sure those all those things are kind of okay and you're all fine with that if nothing's still working this is usually the thing but there is a nice easy quick way of getting it all back on straight away with no effort and not even any tools and I'll show you here then is our free way valve. Now, as you can see, I've turned it upside down with a wire point. You won't be able to do that in your own cupboard, of course, because it will be set a certain way, and you're going to have to either put your head upside down or down the other way, depending which way around it is. But look for the wire going in, like it is here, and you'll see there that there's an auto sign this side and a manual side that side. The manual side is what we want just to get us over a hurdle for a while, get your heating or hot water back on and it's very simple to do. There's a lever here, see that little lever? And what we're gonna do is push that over and lock it into this little square here. I'll show you what I mean. Now it's sprung, because this is a Honeywell sprung return valve as they call it, and you've got to push, you might hear it go ing, like that. And when it gets over to the far end, push it up and let it drop into that little V there. You see that little V there? Now that's open, it's locked open. So now your heating or hot water will now go. They will work because it's been put into manual, it's overridden the system. And this will get your heating going. No problem at all until you get round to renewing the head of this valve or even the whole thing if you fancy it. Sometimes the body part here can corrode inside and sometimes it may have been because the corrosion inside and perhaps a, a system not, not being cleaned can actually cause this head motor to burn out anyway and that may have been the reason why it's gone in the first place. So sometimes it is better to do the whole thing and sometimes you will just get away with just the head part you're just unlucky and the motor's gone in the head so let's have a look at the motor and I'll show you how easy it is to get it off so the valve is now the other way again and if you look there you'll see there is a screw there and all we've got to do is undo that screw and we'll take the top cover off quite simple now I lay it on the cupboard here as it's just me today no hands with the cameras I'm going to do it one handed so undo that screw there and the top cover should then pull away like so revealing the motor inside now if you're up to it you can just renew that motor you can get the motor itself which is even cheaper if you don't mind obviously getting into there to replace it but so we just undo this screw here so I've just done I've loosened it off yeah I'll turn it up the other way do the other one here yeah. See it? You should be able to pull the motor off the body like so. Simple. And that shows us now just the body of the valve, as you can see there now. Now at the other end, on the actual control box, or it'll be a, a box with a lot of wires in it. Obviously, all the best thing to do. There's a lot of wires there that got to go back the same way they came out. I always find the best thing is just to take a photo on your phone 
and then take them off and replace them in the same order then you won't make any mistakes or get any wrong so that's the best way to do it in my opinion or take one out at a time and replace it one at a go but uh, take best bet take a photo and then you you won't go wrong you put these wires back in because there are quite a few connections there as you can see to be changed but that's quite a simple little job as well really there you are an easy doddle fix isn't it get your heating running straight away very easy you can leave it for as long as you like with that lever in the manual if you want to until you get that head unit replaced okay this manual side really is is kind of when us plumbers like to go in to drain systems down and we put it in manual just so that everything runs out kind of helps with emptying the system not meant to be left in manual <laughs> for a long time you've got to get that bit renewed okay as soon as you can i'll give you the link as i say for a motor and one for the body and motor if you suspect that the motor is burnt out because of this paddle arrangement inside here is, is burnt away or seized up or clogged up and the motor can't turn it as I say and then eventually it burns the motor out because of an online problem with this itself so sometimes you know best to buy both but if you just buy the head you can still buy the body but you'll have to buy it with a head as well if you see what I mean but then you would have a spare one <laughs> okay that's about it and so that's all for you with F&E systems that is the old hot water cylinder and tank and lock obviously combi boilers fair enough do have a freeway valve but it's, it's it's inside the boiler a whole different type of thing altogether and i'm afraid you are not allowed to touch anything in a combination boiler at all unless you are gas safe registered but these are on your hot water system no problem anyone can do them if you feel up to it okay i think it's an easy job if you want to change it okay well that's about it from me just a little quick easy one catch you next time don't forget all my stuff usually place Derrick and 33. Thanks for watching guys. Bye bye.